Hi everyone, in this video I'll go over using Netcat and C to transfer files. Netcat allows you to create and listen for TCP and UDP connections for reading and writing, and it's helpful for troubleshooting network issues among other things. And since it operates at layer 4 of the OSI model, there's no overhead at the higher layers such as FTP. If you're in a bind with no alternatives to transfer files, then Netcat can help. Note though, as it is for basic communication, there's no encryption when files are transferred. I have two servers here. Server 1 has the IP address 192.168.2.111 and on server 2 I have the IP address 192.168.2.222. Server 1 has a file called my file and it's one gigabyte in size and on server 2 it doesn't have it. So I'm going to be transferring over that file from server 1 over to server 2. So I'll be setting up server 2, we'll be listening for a connection, and it will be listening on TCP port 12345, and what will be coming from that port will be sent to my file 2. So I'll put in nc for netcat-l listening on port 12345, and I'm going to redirect it over to a file called my file 2. I'm going to hit enter. Server 1 will be sending the file. And so then I'll put in the netcat nc dash w space 2, 192.168.2.222, and the port number 12345, and then I'm going to send it my file. The dash w2 is a timeout, so after two seconds, it will terminate the connection. Essentially, two seconds after it transfers the file, it will terminate. So it's sending the file. Okay, it has completed. So if I do an ls on here, I'll see it has the file, my file 2. And then on server 1, there's the my file. And to confirm that it did send over the file, I can do a hash check on it. SHA-256 sum, and I'll put in the file. Now on the same thing, I'll do it on server 2. And here we can see the generated hash and the generated hash here on server 2, and they are both the same. So that's how you can use Netcat to transfer files. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.